All right, this is Juliana's critique, final class critique on the tail exercise. All right, so story-wise, um, who can tell me what's going on in this story? What do you guys think is happening? Is it pretty obvious or is it a little confusing? What do you think? Based off what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. foxes jump in a hole. Because I know what we've talked about. Uh, yeah. It's obviously hunting. Yeah. But if I didn't know that, I'd probably just think it was playfully jumping into the hole. But yeah, I still think it gets it across that it's a fox, a very excited fox as it jumps like mm -hmm. twice in the air, really high, really sporadically. Yeah. So I think it uh, it sells that. Okay, good. So yeah, if if we hadn't um, watched, you know, if you were if you're if your eyes were, this is the first time you had seen this and you hadn't seen the video references, um, it'd be clear that the fox is jumping. I don't know that it'd be so clear that he was hunting, because generally foxes are really still before they make their initial jump. And he's jumping a couple of times, but um, anyway, so yeah, he's jumping around, pretty happy, he buries himself. Um, and we kind of use this default torus shape to, to make him look like he's burrowing a little bit. Damien says, I think the last droop of the tail conveys well that it has either given up or is tired. Yeah, fox doing fox things. Yeah, okay. So what's working well for uh, Juliana as far as the animation goes? What do you guys think? I mean, kind of like how I said earlier, the like, the last droop, it kind of like bounces a little bit when it falls. I don't know. I think that part is pretty good. Yeah, the, the tail at the very end? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of seems like it just go, goes limp a little bit, like it gives up. Uh, that helps really communicate the idea of maybe he's just tired. So are we are we completely off base, Juliana, or are we on track? Are we are we telling the right story? Are we understanding no, the right track story? With gives up. Okay, <laughs> good. So just watching the um, arcs, it seems like at least um, the body shapes are following a, a, three times. They seem like they're following a fairly clear arc, which is good. Um, what do you guys think of the squash and stretch and the tail, the overlapping action on the tail? How are, how's that working out? Are there areas to improve? What do you think? Beck says it's a very squishy fox. Yeah, there's definitely squash and stretch. One part that I, it's a little bit more obvious uh, right through here. You can see that the fox goes back to its initial or its default shape at the top, which is good because um, gravity finally starts taking over again and it starts to. Um, I, on the other end, though, I think if we if we frame by frame through some of these initial poses, I actually. So we have a squash, we have a stretch. But we hold that stretch for one, two, three, four. So four frames. You probably want to get out of that sooner. And also you can see here, I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. Um, there's, you probably want to delete that frame that this holding where you just have that, the end of the tail moving by itself. And, um, also right here, um, I would also be relaxing the, the fox back into its default position. So it does get there, but it's like already falling down. So it should already be stretching the other direction. So it starts, it leaves the ground stretched and then it goes back to its default shape. And then as it's coming back down, as gravity's taking over, it starts to stretch again. 
And here we have a squash, but we don't have a stretch to uh, anticipate the squash. And you do have a stretch here, but what's weird is instead of going up, the fox kind of goes forward with a stretch instead of um, up so much. And then there's another stretch here, squash and stretch. I like the tail on, on this. The tail's working a little bit nicely, or more, um, it's following the arc pretty nicely on the, the final arc. The tail kind of gets a little stiff in the middle arc, the middle jump. Let me just watch it one more time here. Yeah, and it's also kind of stiff on the front on the first jump. When it's falling, it starts to um, trail a little bit better. Um, yeah, I would I would um, see if you can work on the squash and stretch a little bit more, the timing of it more than anything. And then the arcs on the tail. Um, I, I like this part. It, it kind of falls forward and falls back, which is nice at the end. But just make sure that throughout the whole animation, the, the tail feels nice and fluid. Um, so it doesn't have any places where it kind of feels stiff. I also like when, it, when he's burrowing, you rotating him left and right to kind of get communicate that idea that he's uh he's digging in deeper all right do you guys have any any other thoughts for uh juliana all right thank you juliana See, from Juliana, we have, let's go up and then we'll come back around. Hold on just a second, guys. I heard my doorbell ring. I have to go answer it. I didn't miss anybody. Okay. Um, so let's go up to Hunter. You ready, Hunter? Yeah. All right. I'm just going to move this way so I don't get distracted by my own words displaying for me. Uh, so it's 03, right? That's like the latest one. <laughs> All right, so I can't help with uh, I can't help but look at this and remember the video reference because the dog just immediately comes to mind. Um, so it's working well for this animation. I think the like time it's in air, it's kind of just staying there for just a little bit, really helps the uh, feeling of like weightlessness of the ball creature. Yeah. I also like yeah. the at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is a, this is really well timed. the The arcs are working nicely. the 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 squash and stretch really is used effectively to communicate um, as not only as a mode of transportation, it's moving forward by bouncing, by squashing and stretching, but also to communicate um, emotion. To help con connect that uh, idea of um, happy or um, just energetic, and then the tail is really nicely animated. There's uh, there's just a lot of nice every every single time the the tail is um, moving, the overlapping action is working really nicely. 
it even slaps the ground and it's still overlapping. Right there, it slaps. And as it as he rotates around in a circle, the, the tail uh, just follows very nicely in a natural um, spiral. So yeah. So this is a hard question. What is there, how can we help Hunter improve this? The only thing I, like one of the things I was noticing, like mm -hmm. just the bounce just before it's bouncing onto the wall. It's really similar to like the previous bounces of when it's like those kind of like short arcs, like the lead up to it. So you uh -huh. don't really have that kind of like big anticipation of for it to be jumping onto that wall. And so it kind of feels like it's like, whoa. <laughs> so you think that the, the squash and stretch needs to be bigger just before it hits the wall? Uh, I wouldn't. Or maybe the... It's for me, it's like at first, uh, just before like around this mark, uh, -huh. uh it, it didn't look like it was, uh, it kind of, I don't know why, but I thought it was like floating up. It wasn't, <laughs> but you know, uh, there was just something about it that's like, it doesn't really differentiate. Like, why is this jump so much bigger than the previous ones, I guess, uh -huh. when it's kind of similar to like uh, the Evers, but I do see that there is a squash there. Yeah. That kind of sets it up. So I don't know. Okay. I might be crazy. <laughs> yeah. A little, bit, a little bit longer like maybe an extra frame just to show like that it's really squashing yeah that that might help just a little bit more anticipation just maybe a frame or two longer here before you pop up and i think also what might help and i just noticed this just because i'm going frame by frame like this um there's not really a stretch you ha have a nice squash but i think if you got into a stretch pose that would also help to um you start to stretch, but it's almost like it's a little bit late. So I would get into that stretch sooner. But overall, the feel of it is is a very um, natural feel. It's very believable. Uh, there's a lot of personality and appeal to the character. Um, yeah, very, very nicely done. Any last thoughts? All right, thank you, Hunter. Let's see. Um, Hunter, let's go to Damien. Oh, sorry. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Reggie's loading his. Oh, sorry. I don't know, David. I I missed your your um, comments earlier. Um, I love the arcs and the timing when the fox is in the air and the turn at the end gives it personality. Uh, is that for um, Hunter or is that for a previous? Um, I think, yeah, that was for Hunter. Okay, yeah, I agree. Good. Okay, um, thank you. I'll try to look more at the at the comments so I can read your your thoughts if you guys aren't able to share your audio for whatever reason. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, okay, so Damien, revision three, does that sound right? Yep. Okay. I just... Yeah, I only did like a few slight changes. I'm not sure if they're that noticeable. <laughs> yeah. See, I like how, how clearly this story reads. Um, I really like the, the twist at the end where a little, a little bitty beaver slash squirrel thing puts, pushes him, or ground squirrel, whatever you want to call it, pushes him out and goes back in. Um, so yeah, it, it's working pretty well. What, what thoughts do you guys have? How can we help? Um, or are there any, are there any areas where, um, We can help Damien improve the animation. I think the digging 
uh, mm -hmm. you might have wanted to like tilt the fox a bit so yep. it looks like it's not just kind of sinking into the ground. Perfect. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, there we there we saw that a, a couple of times this morning, and then I saw it today already. Just having it dig where it's kind of um, rotating side to side, I think that's really going to help him uh, feel like he's he's um, uh, having a little bit of a struggle digging deeper into the snow. That's a that's a good point. Good. What other what else? I do want to know. I like the arc of that jump. It's really nice, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's really clean. And I've seen a couple of students, uh, this one and another this morning, this this pose. Uh, hold on, let's see if I could. Yeah, right there. Um, they almost use the whole body as an exclamation point to to indicate surprise or shock. Uh, he, he's he's uh, stretched and his tail is also part of that stretch even taller. Uh, this morning they had the tail, the tip at the end, kind of wiggling, but that's a different emotion. But this was just like shock, like what just happened? <laughs> so I, I like that addition there. I mean, that was probably their last time too, but just uh, it, it reads very clearly. Anything else that might help to uh, make this even stronger? The arc is the arc is nice. The tail, for the most part, it seems like it's falling pretty well overlapping action and it's trailing behind the body. I would say if anything right here at the beginning, I think you could delay the tail a little bit more. So on this first arc, well, let's see before I say that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe delay is the right recommendation or maybe have the tail a little bit more following a C curve. Because especially through here, this I think this is really what gets me, where where I can it it starts to feel stiff through here. You can see that there's there's no movement or just very little movement, and that would be a really nice place to to have the tail following the the path of the arc that it just came from, and I think that's I think you could probably get away with the first part if at least at the end, as it's coming down, the tail is is up in the air until it settles down. Maybe it slaps the ground, I'm not sure, but uh, and then you pop up here. I think this pose, it may not be, uh, what, what I wanna say is the angle of the tail, um, it kind of feels like it scales down, but it's, it's mostly just the camera angle because the tail is probably just rotated away from the camera. So we go from, this full tail to this kind of scaled down tail and then to this big one. So it kind of pops right there. So an easy fix would be to just take this uh, tail and zero out the, the default or put it back in default pose, all the, the tail controls, and then force it into a, a shape that's a better transition between here and here. It kind of looks like you're, instead of like, putting the tail like up and down, like uh, it's, it looks like you're kind of twisting the tail yeah. like at the base of it rather than like having it move like up and down like a tail would, which is kind of like, cause foxes don't, not all foxes are like tails where they can just spin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. It, it's, I think it might just be rotated more sideways. Thank you, Morgana, that's a good point. Uh, that's kind of what I was trying to say where it's kind of positioned away from the camera. That's yeah, that's a, the point I was trying to make. Um, and then through here, it just follows really nicely, follows the arc of the path. Let me just watch it at full speed again. He's whacking back and forth. And one thing I do like also is, is it really feels like the tail is the wagging of the tail almost feels like it's helping propel him deeper into the snow. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to work on. Like the tail moves, he sinks down, it stops moving, he moves it again, he sinks, tries to sink down again a little yeah. bit. Yeah, good. I think I, I just did that with like 
like the first wag it's good but i think like i was struggling with the second wag because it just kind of looks like i don't know so i might fix that i don't know it seems pretty both wags feel pretty good to me they're, they're, they're nice and fluid um they feel equally as as um forceful i just noticed something uh sorry let me stop it and just go to that frame it looks like the tail might clip through the ground maybe it's just my eyes yeah uh so just um maybe rotate it a little bit out of the ground so it's not or maybe yeah just rotate it away so that the tip doesn't clip through the ground for those those couple of frames at 60 and 61 and then i think after that it's pretty good oh, yeah actually it's 77 it also does it oh, yeah i don't think i noticed that i think like one of the critiques last time was like oh maybe push them lower down and i guess like mm -hmm. i forgot to fix the tail yeah okay yeah that's an easy fix just maybe a couple rotations away from the ground with the the end con uh, end tail controls and i think you got it good any last thoughts I do have one last thought if you guys don't have any, any anything else. All right, so I, I really like this little character and his his aggression. But as we watch him, uh, let me see if I can just frame by frame through this. He pushes out pretty quickly, which is okay, which is good. But as he comes back, well, yeah, I guess he kind of seems like he holds there at, at 101. And then he just disappears. Was that intentional or? Um, I don't know. I think like the, I don't know. I'd have to check my like graph editor or something. I don't know. Yeah. I just wanted it to like pop up really quick, kind of shrink down to more, I guess, like circular or maybe squash and then go back in. Yeah. Yeah, it may just be a, a graph editor issue where you can just smooth out that that last um, those last couple of um, key poses with a spline tool so that it, it doesn't just he gets stuck there and then he just disappears. So he just kind of grows in gradually and it could still be quick, but um, or it could be the opposite where he's, he's like chewing the the uh, fox out right here. So he, he, there's some dialogue or something and then you have to add audio. <laughs> Um, and then he he goes down, but uh, yeah, so it's just a, a minor little thing as well. Any last thoughts? All right, thank you. That was Damien. Um, where are we at? David, ready? Um, reference. So Fox final. I love that it's a loop. Mm -hmm. it, it adds to the personality of it all. Yeah. And I like the squashing and stretching. It really also gives the fox personality. Mm -hmm. how, how it's moving is a bit weird since it's kind of like jerking around a lot to me. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, yeah, there's a lot of energy in this one. It's It's a fun little fox. Um, and I do like the squash and stretch and like I, we talked about the slide in is, is nice. And there, that, that can be justified because maybe he's just running, he's hopping really fast and then he just slides in to avoid hitting the couch. The one area that, I mean, and th that we'll talk about when he's on the couch in a second, but when he's on the, when he jumps to the table, you have a nice arc. But he kind of he just kind of slides away. I think we want to maybe have him squash and stretch. You have him squash. Maybe even stretch into that instead of just immediately go into a squash. Don't forget to stretch in contact and then squash. And then maybe, I mean, it might be easier just to do what you've done, but what's more important than that is um 
Um, he seems like he, he just slides out as well instead of hopping out. And through that, you also want to make sure that his his geometry is not clipping through the table. So just kind of lift him up high enough so that he's on the surface instead of clipping through the table. Um, so what recommendations do you guys have for the, the time he's on the sofa? I would say have him like bounce a bit more against the like the back of the sofa and the arm. Okay. Uh, because like him kind of like frenzying out like that is kind of really jarring. And I think I think yeah. you'd also get that like a lot more of that squash and squish as well as those uh tail movements with the reactions of how he would hit against those things a lot better with it. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to I have to say, David, this is a, a harder one to animate because I remember from your video reference that fox was really spastic. He was bouncing all over the place. So there's a lot to plan and then to, you know, just add more and more frames of detail. But at some point, I think with the graph editor using the spline tools, I think that should help with a lot of the jittery, taking out a lot of the jittery frames. Um, I think I mostly see it in the tail, but there are some frames, I guess, in the in the body as well. But um, yeah, after the class has been going on and through the graph editor making sure the things are but just like you said because there's so much movement mm -hmm. there are so many keys uh, there's so many like frames to edit uh so i was just a lot of sorry that last changing yeah we can we can work on it after class if you like uh, or we can schedule a time um to have a zoom meeting um but yeah, I mean, the, the story overall, it reads clearly. He's a spastic little fox and he's happy about his new environment. He's kind of exploring. Um, and then now it's just a matter of just uh, really uh, getting a, a good feel of how to use the, the spline tools to, to get some nice cleanup. Uh, and just, just check, make sure that, um, I don't mind him so much going through the sofa because the sofa is squishy and maybe it'll go down. But at least with the floor and the, the table, make sure he doesn't, his geometry doesn't clip through the floor or the table. Okay. Yeah. I, I can walk. All right. Out. Awesome. Um, uh, go I, ahead. No, 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 comment. Oh, I just Hunter. wanted to say that I, I think that the kind of jittery aspect when he's facing away from the camera towards the couch actually works because he looks like he's shaking like right there. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, shakes are really fast, so like, um, I don't know, when my dog shakes, you can't really see them, you just, they're kind of just blurry, so that yeah. kind of aspect, I think, actually helps for that particular part, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree, this shake, I think, works pretty well. Even the tail, it, it, it seems like the tail is even shaking later than the body, which is nice, because it's, it should. Um, I think the earlier shakes are a little bit too jittery though. We can fix those. Um, but I think that that last one works pretty nicely. I agree. Any last comments for, for David? All right, thank you, David. Thank Let's you. See. Yeah, no problem. David, um, Beck, are you ready? Yeah, sure. All right, yeah, this is uh, version eight in spline wow this is a really acrobatic fox so what do you guys think what's happening in this story What do you think, Reggie? So it seems like they spin around, do a backflip, and then kind of like scream, like kind of come to a halt at the mm -hmm. edge of the, the, the grid, mm -hmm. which 
it's interesting. It's, I think it's interesting to look at. It certainly feels. Now it may be just me, my iPad, because that's what I'm viewing this from. But oh. it does feel. Um, it, it, yeah, the video is just going to be choppy altogether. But that's just because of my iPad. But yeah, it does feel fluid. It's a very mm -hmm. fluid animation to me. I like the tail. I wish it would be. I wish it uh, kind of dragged like almost towards like towards the fox head. Uh, when it's like when it's like like coming to a stop, uh -huh. it feels like it just kind of stays stiff the whole. Yeah, time. at the very end. Yeah. So that's a that's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um. So Beck, is this grid? Is that your ground plane? And then this is the very edge of the ground. Is that kind of the intention? Oh uh, yeah, that's kind of how I was treating it. Okay. Um, yeah, so if that's the case, then the tail at the very end, uh, I agree with Reg Reggie. Um, instead of stopping it right here, have the tail continue to to float through because it looks like it, it gets like it hits the ground. Like if, if this grid were con to continue, it would be resting on the surface. But if there's no surface there, you want to keep that tail just maybe rest like even settling down, just kind of wagging back and forth until it settles down. Oh, I was working assume, like with this assumption in my head that the grid continues forever. Yeah, that's that's why you want to make it really clear for the audience. Um, so you you either have to create a ground plane. I know that's pretty much what I'm recommending to everybody. Just create your own ground plane so that you can determine its you can specify its its parameters. If this is the edge of your ground. Uh, you maybe have a, a great big box and you actually see this is a cliff edge and not just a, a grid. Um, the other thing, let me see. I don't know if I... So you started at 101, right? Yeah. Um, one, one, one. Okay, I was I was thinking you, you animated way too many frames, but if you started at 101, I think you're you're in good shape. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because you still have 20 frames to go if you wanted. Um, okay, so how can um, how can we help Beck uh, work out any issues? We talked a little bit about the tail at the end. Overall, I think the tail is um, the arcs are nice. The, there's a lot of play playfulness. Um, seems like there's nice overlapping action. The start of the backflip it seems a little slow and floaty uh, uh -huh. compared to the end. I think that should be like a little swap in their speeds. But I also get like at the end since they're falling down, they're gonna go faster. But just that, like you just kind of get that floaty feel for when it's going up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, and I think part of what I'm seeing at least with, that would might maybe help the backflip is the tail, instead of curling ahead of the body, I think that would be a really nice opportunity to have some some overlap where the tail is is just trailing behind. It's, it's still maybe even touching the ground here. It's kind of down in this position and now it's following the arc and then eventually it does get to this position maybe even at frame 158 but I think through here I think it gets to this early curl behind the head a little bit too early um I would just have it dragging more following that arc that the body is uh, following and then you contact and you squash um this is uh, this is another area you want to be careful about. You have the, the contact, which is a nice stretch, and then you roll, which is okay. But this squash um, without any, because it looks like it's hovering above the ground. So without having contact to the ground, it's it's um, it's like physically impossible to, to squash that way. And then also it pops very quickly. I think I would keep him in contact with the ground through that squash um, instead of having it hovering above the ground when it squashes. Because to, in order to squash, it needs to be pushing against something. And there's if it's above the ground, it's not pushing. Um, 
Yeah, like what you did here, that's more what I'm looking for. He, he contacts and then he squashes a little bit and then he settles out of that. Yeah. But yeah, going back to what was that Morgana? Morgana was saying about the, the initial jump. I, I I now that I'm looking at it again, it does feel a little bit slow. I think you could speed that up the 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 um, backflip. And if you wanted to, you could hold this squash maybe a few frames longer, and then instead of slowly popping out of it. Um, or is not popping instead of slowly um, coming out of that into your stretch, you could just Im immediately pop from one frame to the next. So you have a squash and then the immediate next frame is a stretch. And that's going to give you a lot more energy to, um, to make that, that rotation. So just have, so you just want to plan when you want your, um, your squashes and stretches, um, if you need less energy, they're going to take longer to happen. And if you want more energy for more of a, a an explosion, they need to happen faster. But overall, yeah, it's it's a it's a really nice um, playful animation. Any last thoughts for for Beck? All right, thank you, Beck. And then. I know Allison mentioned that she's not going to be here today, so I'll give her a uh, critique separately. Uh, Reggie, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, so I have this um, final render MP4. Is that the, I'm assuming that's, yep, the... that's the one? Okay, so another thing, just remember with naming conventions, um, these aren't renders, these are just play blasts. Um, mm. And all we want to read is just your first initial last name underscore tail underscore zero one zero whatever version you got to and then underscore sp for spline or bk for blocking or something like that but just to keep mm. it really simple okay and it yeah it, it's just uh just to get you guys in the good habit of, of following the naming conventions for when you're in a studio because when it's when you're in a studio it really does matter all right so what's working well for um for um, Reggie here. The tail, the tail wagging in the beginning is pretty fun before yeah. it jumps. I like the tail wagging throughout. It seems very, there's just a lot of nice overlapping action, the end of the tail. And it seems like that seems to be an area where a lot of students struggle with this rig is they don't overlap the, the end of the tail more than the um, as much as they should later than they don't offset that animation enough compared to the rest of the tail. Yeah, because I looked at I tried and so like I tried it without doing the end, like the end of the tail and it felt like, I don't know, the end of the tail felt too stiff. So mm -hmm. I started animating the end of the tail as well and it felt better. Yep, that, I think that made a big difference. It looks it looks really nice. In fact, you could I, I would say you can even do it a little bit more right at the beginning. Hmm. Maybe it's just the angle. I'm not sure, but it looks like through here, it feels a little bit stiff on the, the end of the tail. The rest of the tail is nice. Maybe just adding a few more um, offsets so that it gets there a little bit later, like you're doing the rest. But yeah, it seems like you really have a good control of how to um, get the tail to do what you're wanting it to. Hmm. And then he ju he jumps up and he, he does he pop? It's like a bubble he pops or something. So like I didn't. I kind of use like using a ref using a reference that I had in, in the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I just consider it like a snow pile because I didn't oh, okay. really like because uh, I didn't have time to like color it or anything. Yeah. Okay. I really like at the very end his reaction. He seems really disappointed in what he did. Is that his? Is that the idea? Yeah, the idea was like he thinks that something's in there. He goes in like smashes the little the little uh the hill and then comes out and there's nothing there and there's like a sigh of disappointment yeah that sigh is what i like it really reads nicely also rotating tilting left and right at the beginning like he's really studying it looking back and forth i think that's really nice mm -hmm. good all right so what do you guys think what can uh 
where can where can Reggie improve on in this animation? I do want to mention at the I I also really like the tail at the beginning, but like right before the fox is picking its tail up to jump, it does like clip into the floor like right there. Yeah, yeah, I tried to fix that, but it was really weird to get it uh, like the the transition between like kind of slowing down the uh, the tail wag and then like prepping the anticipation, it wouldn't stop clipping through the ground. Huh. So I kind of just um, left it alone because I didn't want to spend too much time on it. And yeah. something else I kind of wanted to know is that like the tail to me doesn't feel like like I like how the tail moves, but like when it's actually jumping, it doesn't feel like the tail is like moving with the body since like you have it kind of like uh particularly like when it's going down, it's already curving over the head and it feels kind of sudden. Yeah. On the way down. True. Yeah, on the way down, but it's like I feel like even like when you're in the air to like uh, go over like before it gets to this spot when mm -hmm. it's on the first half of the arc, it could be a little more like you might want to like tilt the body like facing up so it's showing that it's going up or something like that or going a little more exaggerated with how the tail might curve up at the top. I see what you mean. I think the only reason I didn't do that was because in the, like in the video reference, it seemed like the fox was always pointed downward yeah. when he jumped. Yeah, so he was that's always pointing towards his target. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. What, yeah. that's what I was thinking as I was talking about that. I was like, mm, but the fo I think the fox is probably was like looking downward or something yeah. in the reference, which yeah. then yeah. it's like, that would, that makes sense. And it's like looking mm -hmm. at it, it's like, it's that no. <laughs> but I do get what I you know, mean though, because I did try that too. Yeah, just the jump seems a little off to me, but I can't really explain why the best. But it might also just because like the box and the reference jumped a little odd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing I would say about the tail through these frames is I'm frame by framing through them. Um, I like that it it is offset at, at the beginning, and then yeah, I kind of agree with what Morgana was saying. It it seems like it maybe curls a little bit too much or too early. I'm not sure. And then it kind of straightens out and then it goes the opposite direction too much. This is a really good opportunity to just um, follow the arc, have the tail trailing in the direction of the arc. So we, it, it's, it's almost like a, a ghosting effect where we did, the tail is, is the trail that it just came from instead of getting ahead of the, the rest of it where it, it's gonna, eventually you'll get there, but I think it shouldn't get there until after it's hit the snow. And then like, this is the first frame where it, it really gets there. I think maybe you, you got there too early with the tail uh, pointing, mm -hmm. you know, C, C curve over his head. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, it's working pretty well. And that's a, that's a simple fix for the tail. Yeah. Yeah. Good, any last thoughts for, for Reggie? All right, thank you, Reggie. Mm -hmm. Let's see, where are we at? Reggie and then Morgana. It's three. Oh, three. three. Okay. Are you a Star Wars fan? No I chance. am not. I've never watched a Star <laughs> Wars thing. <laughs> Every time I say your name, I keep thinking of Princess Leia. I mean, it's Princess Leia Organa, but I keep thinking Princess Leia Morgana. <laughs> That's just because I grew up in the 80s, I guess. All right, pop, and then digs, and so this is another one of those defeated foxes that gets stuck in the snow, or? Yep, pretty much. Okay. So what do you guys think? What's working well here? I think the tail movement is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's really nice overlapping action throughout. The the tail, especially with a jump, the tail really follows the arc of the path really nicely. And then impact and then the tail follows after. And then it just, yeah, every, the tail, and I think in every single position, the tail is, 
is overlapping, which is really nice. It might get ahead because it's wagging really fast before it jumps, but that's that makes sense right there. Good. So what, what are some areas of improvement? Looks like Luke has a thought. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to look if, if the front, the tip of the tail, does it go into the ground or does it just go like on that second, on that first swing forward right here? Or does it just go behind the fox's ears from this camera angle? You're talking about right here? So it, I think it just goes behind the ears. Okay, that's it what might, I was trying yeah. to look at. Like, I was trying to like see, I was like, does it go into the ground or not? I can tell. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that, and I guess this is a positive thing more than a critique. On this second shake, I really like the weight of the tail. Like it goes forward, but like hesitates a little bit. So uh, right after the first jump, um, I don't know. If we don't need to go back and see it, I just wanted to compliment you on that. That was really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, if we just slow, this is what I, and this isn't necessarily perfectly accurate to what our video reference was doing, but this, this is really nice overlapping action. It doesn't have to necessarily be perfectly accurate. The, the video reference that um, I recommend you guys always start with, it's a, it's a start off point. It's a, it's a place to structure your animation. Um, but you know, this isn't necessarily how a fox jumps because it, it moves the, the, uh, the base of the tail um, doesn't trail like this, but this works. So that that's perfectly fine. In fact, I like this better <laughs> than what an actual fox would do, because we're really looking for nice overlapping action, and that just it clearly is just following the trail, the path of the the um, the body. The one area that I think might need a little bit of area, and this is a simple fix, but right here, the squash and stretch. Um, it seems like maybe it's held too long or it seems like it's um, stretching the, I'm not sure what it is. I think I would have that happen just over one or two frames. And right now it's happening over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So about 15 frames. And you just wanna, the idea of squash and stretch is it's just a uh, kind of a, well, I wouldn't say this always is the case, but it, uh, in these kind of situations, it's it seems like it's uh, a tool to use to uh, communicate an impact, a hard impact, and that you wanna get back out of that quickly. Um, And he's kind of, it looks like he, in these frames, he's, he's kind of digging around or something, which is okay. Um, but that initial impact, especially where it's stretched so like really extreme. And I'm, I'm gonna say, even though we're using the stretch here, I'm gonna say this is squashing because he's face down. So, um, but yeah, I would say you hold this too long and maybe even push it. I think it might be pushed too far. So maybe just pull that, that back a little bit and hold it um, just a few frames instead of 15 frames. Okay. And I think you got it. Any last thoughts for Morgana? All right, yeah, I really like that anticipation also. He, he wiggles his whole body and then his tail is, that's really cute, but it's also very effective. Good, all right. Thank you. Yep. Let's see, Luke, you ready, Luke? I'm good to go, and I would like to mention, actually, no, we'll just watch it first. I was just, I know the tail's messed up in the first few frames, that's all. All right. Speaking of Star Wars, there's a, a family, a church, and they have a son named Luke. I'll give you one guess what his twin sister is named. Jar Jar. Leia. Leia. <laughs> they did that, really? Yeah, they literally, and oh, I, <laughs> when I found that out, I was just busting up laughing, but uh, yeah, the, both both parents were Star Wars fans, so they named their twin boy and girl Luke and Leia. That's pretty funny. Anyways, um, so 4.30 p.m.
Oh yeah, this is with the uh is this a decoy bunny? I never figured it out. Well look, let's see. All right, so what do you guys think is working well for Luke here? I'm really digging the bounciness of the fox, like mm -hmm. as they jump, hop around the rabbit. Mm -hmm. And I love how it's like kind of moving in slowly to kind of get like a sniff at that rabbit. I like that. Like it's really nice kind of timing and well, motion like it's cautious. To it. Yeah. And it, it, it still keeps that like kind of bounciness when it squashes back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of nice things going on. So let me ask you this, Luke. Um, if you, uh, let's say if you come up with the, the idea of having a fox kind of carefully sniffing a rabbit, yes. how much of this uh, would you have come up with without having actually studied a video reference of that? Oh my gosh, I don't think, I don't think I would have thought of this, honestly. <laughs> um, like, if, if I'm, like the jumpy thing and like coming up to a rabbit I was like I because I, where I was kind of stuck was just like oh I'll just like kind of do some something similar with like a rabbit where just like go come up to the thing but like I definitely I, I get where you're coming from like well first I wouldn't have even thought about like oh this fox is gonna play with the with the rabbit thing like do the whole jump thing I would have thought of like actually doing that and then um I mean the little sniff thing like maybe I would have thought of but I think that definitely came from like seeing a video of like a fox like sitting there looking at the rabbit and I was like oh I can do something with that you know what I mean yeah yeah like I can like like stretch that a little further do like a little bit more movement with it but yeah mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah I don't know. and I asked that because um it's very clear that um because I saw the the reference and I can see how much of it was was um came from the reference I just really want to stress how important video referencing is. You're gonna you're gonna come up with ideas. It, video referencing is gonna give you ideas that you wouldn't have thought of. Um, and this is a really cute uh, animation. It's it's um, there's a lot of subtleties that are working really nicely. Um, so I, I'm just saying that to stress how important video referencing is. Your anim you're gonna get to good animation. I guarantee you guys are gonna get to much better animation much faster if you're using video reference than if you're just trying to come up with uh, an animation idea um, just animating your character without looking at, at actual human movement or animal movement or whatever you're trying to animate so good yeah this is working pretty well so what what can uh, we help Luke with as far as improving it that tail at the beginning needs some work yeah but I, I think that's just kind of a unfinished thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually thought it was finished. Wasn't it finished before? It seems like almost that tail went backwards or something. No, yeah, sort of. Uh, I guess what kind of happened was I went to like work with it. Um, and I, get, I didn't do it throughout the whole video. I must have just done it like when I started doing this. But um, the pieces are all twisted around. So when I, uh, when I like, you know, doing splining with it, it looks like a tornado tail. I don't know how to, it's like, oh. like this. so it's like, I'll get back to that. I'll do that. And like, you know, like okay. in typical fashion, I didn't get back to it. Um, had the tools in it. So it's like, I think that'll be an easy fix. I think I just have to basically like keep it and like zero everything out and just put it in the same yep. uh, So that won't take too long. It just like, mm -hmm. it's just one of those things where um, I was like right up to the deadline. And that was like the last thing <laughs> I never went back to do. That was all, that's why I was like, I'm like, I'm sorry, it's in this in this state that's all um yeah. so yeah it's, it is a little backwards it is actually yeah because that's that's really the only thing that really stands out is is mm -hmm. um uh, i guess maybe in the beginning also the not i mean kind of the opposite of that so the tail feels very blocky mm -hmm. but the body feels a little bit too fluid through here yeah the movement of the head mm -hmm. i think maybe you can a little bit more Hesitate, maybe hold it in one frame or hold it uh, kind of a moving hold. You get to a, a tilt and then you maybe get to another tilt as opposed to just yeah. slowly swimming through that. Um, okay. I, I think that that um, your splining works really nicely at the end. I think it's just at the beginning where the head is just a little bit too floaty. No, but other than those two things, yeah, I think it's, it's coming along pretty nicely. Okay. Do you guys have any other last thoughts? 
Yeah, the tail seems to be overlapping really nicely That's through the good. jump. So the jumps, yeah. All right, thank you. No problem, thank you. Yep. Who do we have left? We have, that was Luke. Oh, Lana's not gonna be here. Um, let me see, Jocelyn. Did, we, did you already go, Jocelyn? No, we started with Juliana. Uh, no, uh, but I didn't really change that much from last week. Okay, so you don't have any, um, so we, we there won't, really won't be any new feedback? No, not week? really. Okay, um, let's go to Joe. Should oh, be the one on the top. Final, oh, there we yeah. go, okay. Oh yeah, this is a little obstacle course, yeah. Yeah, I made the, the hoop move. Cool, make it that much harder for him to. Exactly. Wow, he's really excited. Fox has, he must have had a, what's it called? A, a Red Bull. A Red Bull or something, because he's he's got all kinds of energy. Yeah, it was a lot slower when I was animating it, and then I was like, oh, yeah, he's just really excited. Why not? <laughs> and what's funny is there's something else moving in your scene. And oh, it's moving, yeah, on the, the, the wheel, whatever, that circle. Oh. And it, it, it's moving nice and evenly and slowly, and he's just so spastic. It's it's a funny contrast, I guess. <laughs> I see that now. Yeah. So it's a very clear story. Um, the tail's got some overlapping action. There's some nice squash and stretch. The arcs seem to be working pretty well. There's definitely weight to the character. Um, so what do you think? How can we help? Um, what can what can Joe do to plus this to make it even better? Any thoughts? I'm gonna slow it down just by 75% just to see how that changes the animation. So if you guys had seen this at 75% instead of it at normal speed, um, is that better or worse? I think it's better. I think it looks a little better. Feels more, I guess, paced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think I think maybe just slowing, especially the end. I think maybe the beginning is okay, but and of course you also have to consider how much time you have. You're, it looks like you're right at five seconds. I don't see your your current frame, uh, so I don't know if you're over or if you're right at 120 frames. It was right um, at 120 frames. That was like the issue I was running into was I yeah. wanted to make it longer kind of, but I couldn't. Yeah. So he's just really fast. So he also, at the end, he turns around and he jumps one, two, three, so he jumps up three times. Maybe he just jumps up twice. Yeah, okay. That would, Maybe yeah. that'll just to um, you know, to keep. So I would say maybe you can keep let me let me put this back at normal speed. And I just want to make sure I, I'm saying this correctly. Yeah, I think the first part you can get away with how fast he's moving. But right at the end, he, he's up and down and really the tail is, is um, I guess, what kind of feels super fast to me. Through there, so maybe just uh, have him jump up once or maybe twice, but I think maybe even twice might be too much as if you're trying to maintain the 120 frames. But yeah, just kind of slow them down at the end and maybe get rid of one or two of those hops. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. And just checking to make sure it's not clipping through.
So here, um, have him contact in a stretch before he squashes. Oh, oh yeah, you. So actually, I think yeah, you could just take, that. yeah, just take this frame, or this this pose, take the the uh, the main control and just pull. You can keep this frame, but just pull it down until mm -hmm. it touches the the column, and then just rotate that tail up so it's still pointing in the direction he's coming from, like this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I think you got it. Uh, the other thing through here, for him to, I want to say, keep keep this frame, delete this frame, delete this frame, delete that one, keep this one. So when you're when you're following an arc, um, just so it's nice and clean, you you keep the the rotational value at the contact. Um, the top of the crest and then his uh, contact on the ground on the other side. You also, the, the translate Y, um, the same thing, contact, crest, and then, um, so delete everything between the contact, the crest, and the contact again. The translate Z, um, I, I think you can even delete the, the crest, the top of the crest, to so keep this. And then I think you should be able to, if, if, if it moves him too far, if he misses because you deleted that, you can go ahead and put that, that position back in the translate Z. But yeah, just have him contact here. Yeah, there's, okay, and then just make sure the tail doesn't clip through the ground. But I think cleaning this up just a little bit, just some extra frames that you don't need anymore because um, of the splining tools, um, that's going to make that, um, that jump feel even better. It feels pretty good, but I think it can feel even better if it, if you just um, kind of clean it up a little bit. But yeah, it's in good shape though. It's coming along. Any last yeah, thoughts thanks. for um, for Joe? All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, is that everybody then? I think we're back to Jocelyn. Yeah. Did I miss anybody? Everybody's good. Wow, we got that done in just about an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause our, or stop our recording because I'm gonna make two different videos. Oops, where'd it go? Stop recording.